Welcome to Linda's Corner. My name is Linda Bjork, and today we're going to be talking about changing the world from the inside out. I'm delighted to welcome special guest, Anne Hintz. Anne is the author of A Pathway to Insight, and she has been actively changing her own world from the inside out. You can learn more about Anne and her work on her YouTube channel, and I'll include a link in the description. Welcome, Anne. I'm so glad that you could join with me today. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. I am delighted to be talking to you today, and I know that you have had a personal story of healing from the inside out. Would you be willing to share your journey to healing and to change? Sure. Um, I think like most people, it's been quite a long journey. Uh, when I was a teenager, when I was 19, I woke up one morning and found my mother dead in the bathroom. And um, she had died overnight. And it was, there was a big trauma because my dad was living overseas. My brother was at his girlfriend's house. So it was just me. And um, it was a big trauma. And it stayed with me a long time. And I didn't really realize how much a part it played in my life still until I was in my 40s. And I had two young boys. I was stay, a stay-at-home mother. And I went to my doctor's office. And he asked me what my stress level was on a scale of 0 through 10. And it was an 8. And he wondered why, because it shouldn't have been that high if I was a stay-at-home mom with two young kids. And I knew immediately that it was because the tears from that event two decades earlier was still so close to the surface. So he used this seemingly weird technique with me called EFT, short for Emotional Freedom Technique, where you tap on meridian systems as you talk through the, the trauma. And 15 minutes later, I walked away from his office and I could tell the story of her death with no tears. So it seemed magical to me because I had tried so many things over the years and something would make me feel better for a little while and then it would always revert back. But this seemed like it was a real solid change. So I went with it. I learned how to do it myself and I did it on all the traumas that I could remember for my whole life. And one a night, I just went through them one at a time. And I found that my mind became quieter. I hadn't realized that the voice in my mind that criticized me and criticized other people so much was actually my dad's words, the words that I had been programmed in childhood to say. Oh. And it was really nice to become quiet inside. And it was only at that point I could look back and see that that was happening. But while I was living in it, I had no idea that that was my dad's voice. There are so many, so many thoughts going through my head. So I have a couple questions and a couple comments. One thing, I think it's so important that people realize that we have to address those traumas in our lives. Some people think that time heals all wounds, and it doesn't. Time can bury our wounds, but it doesn't heal them. It becomes like a sliver under the surface, and until it's actually addressed, it is still a part of us. So that is amazing that you were able to find someone who could help you. Was he just a regular MD or was he a, what, what, what kind of doctor he did was, you go he to? Was, he was a holistic. He's a holistic MD. Oh, he was a yeah, holistic MD. I'm not sure MD. he uses that technique with people anymore, but at the time it was just, it was perfect. So can I just go along with that point? Yes, that please. That, yes, we, we normally suppress so many things and we don't realize that we're suppressing them. So one of the ways I explain this when I'm talking to people is through the law of attraction. That, um, you know, I think most of us have heard of that, that what we put out, we get back in life. But, but through this work, I realized that it's, it's kind of deeper than that. In that we ourselves, a whole physical being is a signal. And we are putting out that signal all the time. And we're getting back what it is we're putting out. We're getting back that feeling complex of what we're putting out. It's not just our thoughts, because our thoughts, they're just, they're just words. But it's the feeling, the emotion that comes with that, that we're putting out. So if we've got all this trauma stored inside of us, and I realized over the years that it's stored inside of our connective tissue. If we have this stored inside of us, it's part of our signal. And we're getting back in life what we're putting out through part of that signal. And I think that's why people end up doing the same things over and over again, or they attract the same type of person over and over again, or the same experience, because it's part of our signal. And I was fed up with that. I wanted some real, solid, permanent change. So 
I realized I had to do more than just change my thoughts. I had to actually go inside and change that signal so that I was getting something different back in life. Okay, well, let's talk about how to change the signal then, because that's a really big deal. And I know you mentioned, as I read through what you gave me, that you're not a big fan of just positive thought, that that's not good enough, or meditation, but you have a, a different way of, of changing that signal. So what do you do it through the EFT, or what, what do you do? Uh, yes. Let me go back to those two points, though, first. When we're trying to think a positive thought, in doing that, we're not accepting the thought that is there. We're suppressing it. So it's just more of the same that we just talked about. It's a way of suppressing what's already there. It doesn't change anything. So that's why I don't think positive thinking works. Actually, I tried it for many years and it didn't work. So I know that. And meditation does have some benefits because in the moment that you're meditating, you're quieting your mind. So in that moment, you're putting out a good signal. So in the future, you're going to be getting more peace back because you're emitting peace. However, it's, it's not a permanent change. I wanted to actually change the signal so I didn't have to meditate, right? So just in everyday life, I'm putting off this different signal and getting different things back. Okay, that's interesting. So the way I started was with EFT because I didn't know what I felt. To begin with, I was so, I had so much trauma stored inside of me. If someone would ask me, you know, how do you feel? I had no idea. I would, I would put it off and say, I don't know, I'm fine. How are you feeling? Right, because I didn't right. know how I felt. So doing this work with EFT, you kind of bypass that part of you, and you you start you, you just start with words and stories. So like I would tap through these meridian points, and there's I think ten meridian points, and you can find it online. There's hundreds or probably thousands of videos that show how to do it online. Okay, I would tap through those and talk through the stories of the trauma. And then talk through them again and talk to them again until I got to the point where I could just tell it like I was reading it from a book. Right? There was no emotion in my voice, no, no drama in the words. And at that point, the signal has changed because that memory no longer has a charge to it. Right? It's, it's really a signal, right? It doesn't have that electrical charge to it. So... That was, that was the first step, and that was the biggest step because that allowed me to get in touch with how I felt, right? How the, what emotions were behind a particular event that had happened. Okay. So that's, the, that's an expansion of awareness, right? I wasn't aware before of the emotions behind the events, and now I was. So right? how, as you're describing and telling your story while you're doing this tapping, and I'm, I've heard of EFT, but I'm not super familiar with it, so I'm... but. How did that help you understand how to describe your emotions? There, I'm, I'm missing a piece of the puzzle. Well, like if I, I would start with, uh, okay, my dad shouted at me, right? I remember my dad shouting at me, okay. right? So those are just words. That's just a story. And then I can ask myself, well, once, once I tap through that a little bit, I can ask myself, well, how did I feel about him shouting at me? Well, that was scary. It was scary when he shouted at me. So then I can tap on that. It's like, it was scary. And as I'm saying those words, that story inside of me, the, the physical sensations associated with being scared at my dad shouting at me, those are being felt. And as they're being felt and being tapped on, that fear is being released from the body. Interesting. Okay. So you actually ask yourself a question and you figure it out and you are addressing it through, through words, something that comes of words as you figure out. Okay. So that was, the, that was a piece I was missing. That's helpful. Thank you. And then I went one step deeper because underneath each emotion, like for example, fear, there's physical sensations, right? If you're afraid of something, you're probably holding yourself tight, maybe in your abdomen, maybe your throat, so then I would become aware of those physical sensations that I was feeling. Okay, so I was afraid of my dad shouting at me, and I can feel that tension in my stomach as I'm feeling that fear of my dad tapping at me. I became aware of that tension in my stomach, and then that's what I focus on. I 
can feel that tension in my stomach from my dad shouting at me. That's a deeper level of awareness okay. that everyone can find, but it takes some, for me, it took time of doing this work to be then become aware of that. The physical sense like you're peeling back some layers so part of it was addressing the event and then part of it was addressing the the feelings and the emotions and then you you got deeper and recognized the physical sensations that came along with that so yeah. I, I okay that's beautiful so you're you're peeling back the layers and and re- allowing that um those that that trauma in all of its essence to to be released and you know, it's interesting, not everyone is aware that our trauma becomes a part of us physically. It is becoming more more accepted and more understood than it ever has been before. There's a book called uh, The Body Keeps the Score, which is written by a doctor, where before these types of books were written more by alternative medicine or, or other people. So it is, it's, it's interesting, I think as we get a little, a little closer so that mainstream accepts some of these ideas more than they ever have before, which is, um, I, I think, helpful. I think it's helpful to be able to explore different options and see, you know, I, I feel comfortable with this. This resonates with me. Or, you know, there's another route and I feel comfortable with this one. So I'm so happy that you have found something that is really working for you. And and I understand because I saw some of your x-rays that this not only has helped you feel at peace, but it has made physical changes in your body as well. Yeah, so I actually went beyond where I had just said that I had gone. Once I became aware of those physical sensations, I would I would um, start to what I call feel my feelings. So like I would lie on the sofa or when I was doing the dishes and I would think a thought and then feel the feelings, the emotions that came up with it and then let it go. So I did the collective um, traumas of our society. I did 9-11, I did the Loma Prieta earthquake, the tsunami. I would think about the event, feel those physical sensations, let them go, then think about the event again, feel it, let it go, do it over and over again until there were no more sensations left or or I had enough. Um, So at some point, during that, I realized that my awareness stayed inside my body. So imagine you've got a toothache or something or a stomach ache. You can feel that pain inside of you. And when it's gone, you don't know, you're not normally aware. You can't normally pinpoint where it was again. Well, I could keep my awareness inside and move my awareness around, which is what I call insight. I think that's the original t- meaning of the word insight inside sight it makes sense so i started doing that more and more and became able to hold my awareness on tension on the inside which i eventually realized was fascia or connective tissue all my awareness there and i could feel and hear it let go release tension so over the last year or two i've been doing it in my face and my head which is i think where most of our our Excuse me, our trauma starts, it's from facial expressions that we we use when we're not allowing ourselves to be true to ourselves. So like as a child, we might see something we know that is wrong, but we don't feel we can say anything about it. So we actually pull on that connective tissue in our bodies and facial expressions, and it gets stored in there. So I've been working to release the stored tension in my face and it has totally shifted my skull i mean i I look at those x-rays and it still blows me away that i did that with my focused awareness because it changed it'll change the alignment of my eye sockets i didn't even know that was possible and did now i know you said you had scoliosis does that affect the eye sockets i mean how does the eye sockets match with the my whole body was talked because i was born with my right foot up against my shin and i think my whole body was talked um, twisted, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so part that was part of the scoliosis. But um, yeah, the where my neck attached attaches to my head that was totally not straight, and it's a lot straighter now. That and I can feel that incredible tension release in the back of my neck using focused awareness. It's it's kind of strange, but it shows to me is the incredible power of the mind. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. And again, not everyone recognizes that our, our, our mind and our body, our emotions, our feelings, 
all of these things are, are interconnected and they influence each other. And we, we are gaining a better understanding that that, that that matters. They used to talk about, they say, oh, that's just psychosomatic. It's just in your head. Well, psychosomatic means we started with maybe stress or trauma or something, and that it literally affects the body. It's, it's not in your head anymore. Now it's everywhere, wherever that case may be. So um, again, that's, that's something that is becoming a little bit more understood. And I'm, I'm so happy that you're seeing such incredible success. That's, that's quite amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm amazed too. I didn't, know, I didn't know the possibilities when I started this work because my goal was just peace of mind. And I didn't expect there to be physical changes along the way. So it's been really nice to, to have it happen for sure. Oh, that's magical. Well, can you tell me a little bit about your book then? And what, what is the, what are you teaching people? This is about insight. So is it teaching people how to follow this process of being able to become more internally aware? It is. It's called a pathway to insight because I know there could be other pathways too. And the first part of the book, I talk about the law of attraction because, um, that I feel is the basis because until you know why it's important to change, um, there's less incentive to do it. But if you know that you are a signal and you're getting back what you're putting out, I feel it's, it, there's more incentive than to change. And then I go into the steps that I took that I described the first step being EFT and how I did it with the, all the different traumas and um, go through that process. And then I go deeper and deeper until actually um, insight is achieved which gets a little more complex for people to understand, right? As your awareness expands, you understand more. So someone diving in would not understand what I'm talking about, about step four, until they've actually wouldn't. gone through step one. <laughs> <laughs> and my YouTube channel, um, I, I feel like I'm putting out there some more spiritual in-depth things, my real truths for those who are really intrigued um, with that part of the pathway. But also I'm going to be putting out more general things because I feel like we can change the collective of our whole world by this work of letting go of the emotions that we're feeling. Because we know there's so many of those around right now. We're so divided on so many issues, but it's not the issue that's important. It's the emotions that we're feeling. And if we do this work and let go of those emotions, then we can come together in the middle. And we can have a conversation, a dialogue, without it being an emotionally charged dialogue, which yes. is usually just two parties trying to convince someone else of, of their opinion. So that's that's very interesting. And I, I thought it was interesting how you mentioned that you went through the process of, of global events, things that were bothering you. Right now we have, there's a, a fear mentality in a lot of people are struggling with like, oh, COVID is a problem and this is a problem and, and there are real problems. So how, how can you help us to, I don't know, be able to work through that? I'm assuming just the same process where there are situations out there, but as we can calm our own emotions down, then we're able to handle the situations that come up. That's true. But the second part of it, which goes back to the law of attraction is we replay things over and over in our lives until we come become aware of them and let them go. And at that point, we don't we don't attract them anymore. So if we let go of all our fear around, say, um, wildfires and droughts and hurricanes and all those things, if we let go of all that fear, then I believe we won't attract them anymore. And then climate change doesn't have to come about because there's no need because we've let go of all the emotions around it. Same with COVID, same with abortion, same with race issues, same with everything, really. That's when things start to change. If the emotions have gone, you don't need to attract them anymore. That would take a lot of people being on the same page in order to make that kind of, that kind of change. That would be, right. it that would be awesome. It always starts with us. Indeed, everything, everything starts with ourselves. That's super important. Now, there is a common idea that we're not supposed to feel our feelings, that, you know, you shouldn't be feeling that. And um, how do you feel about that idea? That's part of the suppression. It's like, no, absolutely not. I tell people, if you feel hate, and we're told we shouldn't hate people, but if you feel hate, 
I have them tap out hate because I would much rather it be gone from my body than have it live inside being suppressed. So absolutely, we need to feel those feelings and let them pass through. And that's what I've been saying to people about the recent 20th anniversary of 9-11. If that brings up emotions in you, just let them, let them flow, let them come up, feel them, experience them. What do they feel like in the body? What does that fear feel like in the body? Can you feel the tingling in your arms? Can you feel that tension, the nausea maybe in your stomach? Just allow it to be and allow it to pass through. Because unless we do that, we're going to attract something that brings up those same feelings again. And I would rather not do that. So I encourage people to feel those feelings and let them pass through. And that's the magic, I think. It's not just just to feel it, because I could be angry and I could keep being angry. The idea is to feel it, to allow ourselves to feel it, and then to let it go. I think of the analogy of like a, a freshwater body of water versus a salt body of water. Like, for example, in, in Israel, where you have the Sea of Galilee, and then you have the Dead Sea. For the Sea of Galilee, it has an inlet, and it has an outlet, and then it allows it to be fresh water. Whereas the Dead Sea, it has an inlet, there's no outlet, and then it just accumulates and accumulates all those salts and all those minerals until nothing can survive, no fish, nothing can live in there. It becomes dead. And so as we allow ourselves to feel our feelings, don't try to dam it off because then we're, you know, not getting any fresh water to allow it to flow through us and then to work its way out. So that's That's a great analogy. I love that. Uh, And it's a very subtle difference. It's got to really become aware of whether you're suppressing or whether you're allowing because it's so easy to suppress if you feel yourself getting caught up in the emotion of something then then you're not letting it flow you're you're going with it there's a yeah you you explained it really well but yes you want to feel it just just allow it like what does this anger feel like is it is it is my jaw tight can i feel that tension in the jaw can i feel the clenching of my fists so just notice it and allow it to be, allow it to exist. And then it will eventually dissipate and pass through. And that's the same thing that I'm doing on the inside with the, the holding the awareness on the tension in the fascia. I'm just holding the awareness there, I'm allowing the tension to be, and then it will dissipate. And that's so interesting to be able to see that because I'm seeing that on the inside. And I know how to experience it on the outside. And it's the same. That's beautiful. That is magical. And again, I think it's super important that we clarify it as we feel our feelings. I have seen support groups, for example, for like uh, abuse or, or other issues where it is not their intention is not healing. It is validation where they get together and this, you, you're angry and you're angry and you're blaming and you're angry and blaming. And then this person's angry and blaming. And then they say, yes, you're so right to be angry and blame. And when they're done, oh, there's lots of emotion going on, but there's no healing. Right. So and that's why EFT is so valuable at the beginning, because you're not aware of those, the deeper parts that we've just talked about. But if you're tapping and validating and tapping and expressing that anger, it does work it lets go of that emotion and allows calmness and peace to come in so so I, it's a little weird for people to see and sometimes you feel embarrassed to do it i mean if you're in a group i do have groups where, where we do it together so that it's not as embarrassing but you can talk through events um, as a group and just tap as you're talking through them and it allows that emotion to dissipate it's and there fascinating. Is there. i wish i understood why that works And then I would feel even more comfortable about, I guess sometimes it's just try it and see. And I guess that's a way to to get your own validation. It's like an energetic interrupt into the the connective tissue of the body. And I did try it out. So like a day or two after I came back from the doctor's office, we had a 17-year-old cat that needed daily saline injections. 
And the first time I tried it, the right aid injections, my hand was shaking so bad. I knew I wasn't going to be able to do it on a daily basis. So I thought, okay, I'm going to try it out. So I, I tapped. I tapped about my hand shaking. I tapped about my fear of injections. I tapped about my memories around injections. And the next day, it just slid in. And it was so easy. And every day after that, so... You know, I tried it out and it worked so well. Fascinating. So I guess the bottom line is just give it a try and see what what you discover. I would encourage people if they do look it up online because EFT has been around for quite a long time now and it, and it tends to morph. These things tend to morph as people get hold of them and they start doing what they think they should do with it. So a lot of the videos about EFT online are about positive work. But the power in EFT is letting go of the negative. Because we are perfect on the inside. We're totally perfect once we let go of our baggage. So EFT is there to let go of the baggage. When you try and tap in the positive without letting go of the negative, it's just like your analogy. The negative is still sitting in there. So it hasn't done its work. So just be aware of that if you're looking up videos online. Oh, interesting. Thank you for the advice. I appreciate that because I think I will need to do some follow-up. I, I really have enjoyed our conversation and I feel enlightened and I now I feel it's like it's piqued my curiosity a little bit. Because like I said, I have heard a little bit about EFT, but I'm really not super familiar with it. So I think that maybe deserves a little bit more research. So thank you. And thank you for sharing and helping. You've had your own experience and now you're reaching out and helping other people or offering that help. Yeah, I want to get this information out there because we are incredibly powerful and I think we need to exploit that power. Fantastic. Well, in closing, I'd like to share a quote from Heartfelt Quotes. It says, your feelings are valid. You have every right to feel whatever emotion you want. You aren't being dramatic. You aren't over-exaggerating. You're feeling. And that's okay. Today, I invite you to give yourself permission to feel your emotions to accept them, and to let them go. See you next time on Linda's Corner.